Hello again, everybody, and welcome back to G4G for G, Games for Gamers. Today, we're going to take a look at the post Hogan PvP season, aka the Pesty meta, and kind of go over what we saw this season, go over some of the active offensive groups, go over some of the counters that we saw, and just kind of wrap it all up. For those who don't know, this is the season after the one-week extension debacle, which was blamed on Deadpool's life pool. Ooh, did not mean to have you. Um, I'm going to go over the teams that I had that took me all the way up to Vibranium. Uh, sadly, didn't finish there, but we'll get into a discussion on that. And we'll go over some of what we saw on defense and offense over here. So, as you can see, I finished at 14.02, was my highest finishing day ever, but I was in the 1600s over at Vibranium. Um, my biggest issue was not Monday, it was Saturday and Sunday. Friday night, I sat there and said to my girlfriend, hey, this is amazing, I'm, I'm going to get the actual PvP hero for a change, I'm in the top 0.3%. And, you know, you can scroll down through my battle report page, and for three screens, there's one offensive loss. Uh, this is going to be great. So excited. That was Friday night. Saturday and Sunday, I went through the biggest pile of bullshit I have ever seen. Not that I was taking tremendous defensive losses... I was losing to teams that I shouldn't have been. There were characters coming out of the woodwork that were just skull ramming me right through the eye socket, and I couldn't believe it. All of a sudden, I started running into tactical pesty beast groups with Magneto, and like Magneto was ripping my face up, sitting there t throwing a heavy metal goddamn engine part at me, and like one-shotting people, not even if they were magnetized. Uh, with running Nico, it presented a hellish decision on who am I going to neutralize from Pesty first? Am I going to go with the opposing Pesty? Am I going to go with the opposing Magneto? Am, is my agent going to get his Exobliv out in time? I got to try to protect Nico. And it wasn't just about protecting Nico. He could throw the engine just... I mean, my bruiser age and just wham, goodbye. Um, Havoc, Quicksilver, Uncanny proc groups. They were annoying as shit. I mean, you could kind of protect against them, but a Quicksilver's going first. And in between the Quicksilver rounds, Havoc goes and Plasma Waves your agent. Uh, what are you going to do? Plasma Waves pesty, so now your debuffs don't stick. I mean, what are you going to do? If it hit Nico, great. Nico's going to come back from it. And with a vengeance, you know, she Obi-Wan Kenobi styles there. But uh, Saturday and Sunday was a complete turnaround for my entire previous week where I was just rolling over everybody. And, I mean, it was disgusting to watch what happened Saturday and Sunday. I was so friggin' disappointed. Um, I just barely kept my adamantium, I mean my vibranium, and I was building on it so well. And then, obviously, the Monday crush, I, I couldn't get your way back up. And, you know, when you're in the middle of fighting a battle, and you go through three, and nothing you're running on defense is making a shit, Monday, I mean, it was just disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. What happen in the last three days of the tournament. And it wasn't defensive. Saturday and Sunday was not a defensive issue. It was just offensive. So what did I use? Right from the get-go, day one, I was basically No Mercy, X Obliv, and Memento Mori. I didn't have Gauntlet Caress, but what I was using in its place was Famine's Toll, and it was doing a nice job. My round one, Famine Toll, X Obliv, then No Mercy. If it was somebody who was maybe just out of range or a reser, Memento Mori. At the beginning of the season, though, Memento Mori was not doing a lot of its own damage. It was a very situational thing. Who was Pesty Beast partnered with for me? 
Well, it started off with what I thought was the most obvious one, Satana. It was good, but she had a bullseye on her head like you would not believe. It's not from the scrappers. It wasn't the Deadpools. It wasn't the scrapper Quicksilvers that were doing it. It wasn't the Sabertooths. It was everybody. Everybody and their aunt and their grandmother. They called back home and they got their aunts and uncles involved. Everybody was going for Satana. I was like, screw this. this sh forget this. Big ass mark on her head. So then what did I do? Well, I used Rogue for a little bit. I was not that impressed with how I was using Rogue. The enemy Rogue seemed to be pretty good. Mine just didn't seem to hit quite as beasty as defending Rogues were. She was okay for me. Didn't stick to it too long. Had a little bit of Dr. Voodoo in there. He plays nice with Pesty Beast. Still could use, you know, the mind control to control things a little bit. Uh, even do his uh, turn ability on the agent. There was that a little bit. Um, could have probably stuck with him a little bit more. And the Staff of Legba was a little bit nice. But I moved over to X-23. Now why I went over to X-23 is because she has a great put away even if she's not fully leveled. When I was using my X-23, because she X-23 was a new uh, acquisition for me, mostly I didn't have my Assassin Strike. I used her for Made for Walking. That Paragon Exploiter for an Old Blip Pesty group was fantastic. Um, Assassin Strike was icing on the cake. Blades of Rage. But you have to be careful when you have Rogue sitting there. Um, Blind Rage was, was pretty cool. But mostly it's Blades of Rage in the main for walking. If you see a Rogue or, you know, a counterattacker, don't use Blades of Rage. So, who else did I use? In practice, but not too much in matches. Maybe a little bit in the beginning when it didn't matter. Hank and Hank. All Hanks on deck. Ant-Man and... Tactician Pesty. These guys are pretty good. At the time I was using them again, wasn't fully leveled. I didn't have bug squashing, which would have been great, but I had Army of Ants, Goliath Punch, Growing Pains. These three right here pretty much slowed things down, kept your team protected. Uh, Red Hulk definitely had a chance of being used because his Gamma Bomb would stick and all those debuffs. Um, didn't really use him, and he could slow things down a little bit by bulwarking. I think I tried to use him a bit, but, um, I just couldn't make him stick too much over there. Didn't really go for Damon. He wasn't high enough level for me. Uh, I didn't attempt to use Thane. I kind of wanted to do Spiral, but she... I started toying with her after being on Nico for a while, and Nico's utility just was so phenomenal. I couldn't come off of Nico. Didn't really, didn't use Domino, even though she could play well with the Pesty group. Didn't use Iceman. Fandral was a non-issue. So pretty much, here's what would be a standard first round for me. Obviously, Exobliv from the Agent. Pesty Beast would mark a target that was worth neutralizing because he generally went before the agent. So I would look at who do I need to hit on the opposing team Nano Plague and generalize. Oh, I see a tactician. Let me hit the tactician so they don't go to town on Nico. Oh, I see Juggernaut. Let me go to him to make sure he, he doesn't get his buffs. Oh, I see Heimdall. Let me make sure I go to him so he doesn't get his Yallerhorn buffs. What Nico would do, now this was sometimes a very, very tough decision. If it was a melee heavy group, I did not witch arm in the first round and I would do stick to it. That shut down Quicksilver, it shut down Juggernaut, it shut down Rogue, it shut down Pesty Beast. It's great if it hits Rogue before she goes. It's 
still very, very solid if it hits her after she goes, because then she's stuck for her two rounds. So she may have reduced one of your teammates uh, with reduced potential, which is sometimes extremely annoying, but shutting her down for her two rounds afterwards is also very, very good. Quicksilver, yeah. Um, Havoc, one of the counters to this group. Um, if I saw a Havoc, depending on where my agent would go, if my agent would go before him, I would potentially Witch Arm to get the bleed going for the turn fuck. If my agent was going after Havoc, I would try to hit Havoc with a You Suck. Um, just to try to protect my agent. I was running the PvP Bruiser set through 90% of this. I switched the Generalist towards the end to try to get Havoc to leave me alone. It kind of worked. I actually saw Havoc go for Nico a few times. That was interesting. So that was round one. It was often a very, very tough decision to make for what is Nico going to do. The idea was which arm in the first round to bleed, the agent X Obliv's the second round, the agent No Mercy somebody, Nico if they're not if my agent's not exhausted or stunned would turn fuck with kick ass, get my agent to get two swings in a turn. That was the idea. It worked really, really well most times. Sometimes I would accidentally hit my agent when he was exhausted, stunned, unable to take the extra turn. I definitely tried to get smarter, but um, there was, you know, only so much you could do when there was a lot of things you needed to do. Moonstone could have been cool with um, Gravity Well for your own team. And then, of course, forceful personality to immobilize. Honestly, stick to it. These two would have shut down Juggernaut groups, Quicksilver groups, Pesty Rogue. Um, she definitely would have had some good use on offense, but now you're not running Pesty. So what were the counter teams? Well, obviously we saw a lot of the, the Pesty meta going on. Who did I see running defense a lot? No real Iron Mans, no real Black Widows, Hawkeyes, one or two Captain Americas. Towards the end, I saw some uncanny Cyclopses popping up, which was really surprising because he doesn't play well into the meta. But there was a, a battle in the last two days where uncanny Cyclops went to town on my Nico. I just walked away and took lunch because flanked, tactical, tactical, flanked, ta I mean, he just, uh, I've raised a child to college age in the time it, it, it took for him to get done. It was ridiculous. No Doctor Stranges, no Daredevils, a lot of World War II hulks, several Grey Hulks in there, not too much of a nuisance. World War Hulk could be, um, I, I, his rage punches, I saw some ridiculous damage from him even when he was debuffed, or some opening rounds, I mean, just ridiculous. Iron Fist. White Iron Fist did show up a bit at the end. Um, I was surprised to see him a little bit, but he counters Gaunt Caress really nicely. The AI didn't use him great. His... Dude, not even his white hot iron fist, his regular iron fist was phenomenally destructive. I saw him hitting some shots with his iron fist that I I have no idea where it was coming from. Just blam, iron fist death. His um buffed healing over here is praying lotus he basically like resurrected an agent that was near death it was still a win for me but huge huge heal over there uh even with debuffs on him did not see any non-sploit miss marvels saw a few night crawlers in the beginning had a bad experience where i ran against a electra night crawler group and uh, Electra went early, hobbled me, Exobliv was not stealthy, Nightcrawler tanked it, 
that one screwed me up. I lost. I've ran into Electra since then. She was generally a non-issue simply because she went after Exobliv went out. And that's all that mattered to me, so couldn't be protected against. Saw one or two Spider-Man. Saw one Spider-Man right at the end. He actually did somewhat well, which was surprising. No real storms. A few Thors, not too many. He kind of all but disappeared. Did run into an original War Machine within Sunday or Monday. Saw him and went, is that... Is that original, or is that the first? Is that close? Oh my god! It's original. God, I gotta get on him before that friggin' Wild Blue Yonder goes out and exploits everything. <coughs> Excuse me. I did run into some Pepsi cans, and I was disgusted by the near 21-gun salute, full overcharge 21-gun salute, near wipe out the whole team things. I I'm still disgusted that's allowed to happen. That entire team could be near death in the first round because of him. Like, if you pair a really offensive Quicksilver slamming your entire group, and then he goes early, forget it. Uh, some Wolverines, he didn't amount to much. Yeah! Mockingbird! Yes. She showed up certainly within the last two, maybe three weeks of the season. She was part of the pesty counter. Um, she w she could be painful if not dealt with. And Mockingbird Havoc groups were definitely the pesty counter. No real Scarlet Witches. No Batmans. Some Emma Frost. Uh, occasionally a little bit of an issue. Her own organic diamond could help her because it's not... Um, a remove all debuffs thing. It's just remove one. So it was allowed to get through Pesty's auras. Obviously, Famine Rogues, they were all infiltrators. I didn't run into one blast one at all. No magics, no gambits. Yes, tons of Quicksilvers. Absolutely. Quicksilver Juggernaut. Quicksilver Havoc. Oh my god. Fuck you. Quicksilver Havoc. Uncanny proc. First round, early turns, G go fuck yourself. Deadpool, yes, did run into him, mostly a non-issue. The AI clearly wanted to go 1, 2, 3, 4, usually made it through 1, 2, 3. If you did Nico, stick to it. Before he even went, he would sit there and recharge. He wouldn't even try his bang, bang, bang or anything else. He would hit sharp, pointy things. I've seen him live a while and go 1, 2, 3, 3... Just, he wasn't coming up to happy to see you. Something changed. No Hercs, no Rising Up groups, really. No Ghost Riders. He did not make the appearance that I thought he might. For, you know, big pennant stairs. Didn't really happen. Um, Burnout. Which is the one? Uh, yeah, Highway to Hell, applying Soul Fire to everybody. That, that could have been pretty cool. Obviously, Pesty Beast, a sprinkling of infiltrators, certainly a lot of tacticians. Some cables in the attempted turn fuck. The AI did get it done a few times. Uh, some Psylocke's not too many. A lot of Havocs down the stretch. Screw you, go to hell. The last three days, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, I was seeing Magnetos pop up out of nowhere. And my god... Please jump in a lake of fire and go skull ram yourself. I was seeing him throw heavy metals at me that, I mean, not even magnetized people. He was just destroying my team. Tactical Beast, Tactical Magneto, hard to pick who I was going to hit. If my, if my agent was going to come after them and my pesty beast was first, I'm like, oh my god, who would I protect against? Nico was weak to either one of these. I, I generally had to pick Magneto, but he was a total ass bag. I run into a, ran into a bunch of stupid BR Hui Hui groups running Magnetos that were just doing the level of damage that I did not expect. He'd be debuffed, and he was still doing tramendous amount of damage. A 17k graviton well. Heavy metals that were one-shotting. I... 
I, I visibly groaned and stabbed myself every time I went up against three or four agents that were running Magneto. All hui Uh X-23 sheets came into play a little bit on defense, did use her on offense for a while, mostly because of made for walking. I didn't have Assassin Strike when I was using her, but I was using her for these exploits. She has a bit of a weakness in using Blades of Rage early if Famine Rogue had not burned her counters yet. No Wafts, no real Britons, no Hanks, but I think Hank and Hank is actually a very good team. No Black Knights, no Phantom Xs, obviously, no Visions. I did see some attempts at Omega Sentinels. You know, with Nano Plague, a joke. Absolute joke, watching Omega Sentinel. It was like pitting, wa watching a decrepit dog hobbling across the street. You just, it was pure pity when I saw Omega Sentinel. No Shitter Stars, no Union Jacks, even with his ISOs. Mm, one or two Red Hulks. His Gamma Bob could have played into the meta. I'm surprised because he could have protected and played into the meta. Really kind of surprised it wasn't utilized. Definitely some Quicksilver Juggernaut groups. Um, Pesty would try to go for him to neutralize him, so I didn't get one shot. Some attempts at Wonder Man, honestly, I thought he could have materialized on defense a little better because he's immune to dots, but non-issue when I faced him. No real angels, no archangels, no real daemons, really. Some Satanas on defense, yes, that's, that's putting a lot of faith in your Satana. Some decent AIs, the AI was very chaotic with her. I saw some good attempts, I saw some bad ones. No bishops, some Electras. Ares r maintained his visibility. Um, some things early on didn't see him down the stretch. He could have helped with Brutal Strike um, and Fatal Blow. Now Plague, yeah, it, it, it could have been okay to run him. Uh, Amberfield, possibly, but once you got Nano Plague, that runs out. I could see some offenses using him with Pesty Beast, but he doesn't play that well. Because he doesn't cause a lot of things. He doesn't exploit it. Not too much in the way of Spiral. Uh, Heimdall still was being used, and god damn it, I saw some Pesty Heimdall groups. Um, all about the shutdown. There were some times where he did not have his Yallerhorn buffs up, and his whole fund was about as bad as those Magneto heavy metals. I'm like, why? Why is he hitting so hard? He's not buffed. Don't know what the hell was going on there. Um, his Vigilance still was getting a lot of good procs. No real Loki. Some Dr. Voodoo's. I think I did try to use him on offense for a little bit. Wasn't too bad. Not too much in the way of Dooms. Maybe phase two or three. Mostly an easy kill. No real dominoes. There were some saber tooths. That's what Momentum Mori is for. Um, a few Nikos down the stretch, but didn't run into her too much. No real moonstones. Some Icemen. Not too bad. No Sunfires. Ran into two Fandrels. Rescue. Again, like Omega Sentinel, you just want to pat her on the head and go there, there. It's nice for trying. Go back in the closet, because you're not cutting it. Um... Maybe two Venoms overall. I know the first time I ran into this Venom, I just rolled over and was like, what? Complete non-issue. So, uh, that's what I saw this season. The The counters at the end were Quicksilver Havoc, Mockingbird Havoc, um, uh, Pesting Magneto, because Magneto's just going to do what he does if he magnetizes people. I'm surprised at what he was walking through. Supposedly, Iceman still bugged. I think he could have been good on offense. I mean, this this lockout over here due to disabled and the stun um, could have had a lot of control with him. Uh, honestly, Nico just won me over. Her turn fucking over here, her ability to shut down the melee groups with stick to it. If there was no Pesty Beast, do what she did with more dots and rock and roll. If there was a Havoc and my agent was going to go after Havoc, you know, use you suck to neutralize him. Uh, she j just couldn't, she was the MVP. 
Pesty was the skeleton. He was the structure. He was the cement. The rhubarb. Uh, rhubarb. <laughs> I mean, you know what I mean. He he just was the the foundation. But she was the home run hitter. The absolute ninth inning grand slam MVP. She saved so many battles because of her res and her absolute utility. It would have been nice if there was some indicator that you use the spell. I think she could use a buff that if she dies and comes back, you get her spells again. Because, I mean, being reduced to a witch arm just simply because she's surviving is, is kind of sad. But, um, yeah, she absolutely was the hero down the stretch and pulled out so many bad matches. Uh, I got up to about 16-24, or so, um, by Friday and Saturday and Sunday, I just ran into so many bullshit offensive battles that just were not going the way they should. Lucky dodges, lucky reality hacks, lucky stuns, the, the, the pesty counters. I just was so demoralized going into the what I knew was going to be the Monday crush, and I had suffered the worst Monday crush ever. Just could not keep up. Predictions for next season. Um, bleed Batstone groups. I think we may see Fandral over here with his Flinning Circus and the Batstone. I think you can make an Electra X-23, spread a little bleeds in the first round, Batstone Exploitation. You could see X-23 or Fandral. I'm going to... AoE Bleeders. Let's use a category. AoE Bleeders going Sudden Support, Batstone. And then the Batstone follow-up. Imagine how deadly that could be. Imagine he goes... Look, no cooldown. And it's up in the first round. He goes like this on his first turn. Agent comes. Maybe Batstones once. And then in the second round, Sun Support, Batstone again, end of story. It's going to be like the friggin' Pepsi can all over again. Um, he's, he's, you're going to see him a little bit. Maybe not like a pesty, maybe not really entrenched in the meta, but you're going to see him. Are we going to see Hogan and him together? Can't say, wish I could tell you, I believe I earned Hogan, but honestly, not in the last day or two, sadly. Um, we may see, we, yeah, we, we definitely may see some bleed groups. We may see um, Miss Marvel on defense to try to push No Mercy off the table and say, hey, get away from your friggin' pesty groups. Uh, that might force the offense to go back to a more typical huge, huge damage kind of a deal. She brings um, a lot of buffs to the team. She brings Rally. Next buff being a quick action. That's, yeah, that's, that's strong. That would have played kind of well with Rescue, I think, and Omega Sentinel back in the day. Um, she may bring some of them back if we could get the Pesty meta to go away, which I kind of hope not. Cree Strike, Cree Speed, Perfect Shot, Next Range Attack, deals extra damage. So, hey, um, yeah, think about Fandral and her together. Fandral AoE bleeds. She does this. All allies range damage extra. The Batstone goes. Exploited bleeds with exploited ranged attack. Pretty nice. Lead the charge. That's like Angel. That's like the Shepherd Staff. Uh, that's dealing wide open. And her absorb energy, toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Next melee attack deals extra damage. And, yeah, so you might see her on, like, a, a Juggernaut group or Quicksilver. I mean, you know, you might see her in round one do this, and then Juggernaut goes. You never know. Hell, I mean, that plays well into, uh, like, maybe a Bleed Exploiter or something. Uh, and her passive is allies do not take extra damage. So the offense, you, your enemies are still going to get exploited. So you might see it on offense, but uh, yeah, you might see some Captain Marvel defensive teams going out there. She's like a shepherd staff without the heel. She's like an angel. 
Her ISO means you don't have to give her any accuracy whatsoever. Just dump it into uh, attack and, you know, maybe defense over there so that she can live. So, yeah, that's that's my predictions for the next meta. Doom's going to be gone. It'll just be really nice if the counter pesty groups uh, could potentially wipe out the pesty groups. We'll see. Um, I don't know if the Warriors 3 are going to make an impact, but I think pesty and the no debuff removal has probably made the single biggest PvP impact since the cube. And God, the cube can go fuck itself. I am so sick of the cube. Saturday and Sunday, I kid you not, this is... I watched this. This is not an exaggeration. All but one of my Blackest Void hits hit my team. It got to the point where it was so dangerous for me to have Blackest Void, I recharged. No matter how desperate I was to, you know, maybe generalize somebody, or no mercy them, or Memento Mori and Nico, who's on her last legs, or Sabretooth, I kid you not. I did not get a Black Void hit the enemy team until Sunday. All day Saturday, hit my team every day. All day Sunday until midday, hit my team. I was disgusted with that stupid cube. Uh, today, Monday, during the crush, I definitely was getting plenty of hits out on the enemy team, which is how it had been. But Saturday and Sunday was the wonkiest AI statistical luck that I had ever seen and people say oh no the AI doesn't proc more and it's a tool tip and I, I totally would have disagreed with you the weekend before the Monday crush but anyway that's me signing off here for G4G Games for Gamers hope you enjoyed this video coming up next maybe Grim Dawn first look maybe some Titanfall maybe return to Sitch's quest uh, in South Park, uh, we'll see, but we're probably going to take a break from Marvel for a little while since I don't see anything new. We've got some new stuff in the store. We've taken care of it. Augmented ISOs, Fandral. I would have loved to have shown you guys some Hogun. I, you know, I earned it, but sadly, not really by today's standards. So, who knows? Hopefully, Playdom will fix something that maybe you get 500 attacks you've you know and you're you lock in your rank and or maybe 500 attacks and you can't get knocked down more than 100 or something so just some protection for people who really earn it and god fix the cheaters seriously there's so many people that are done with this game because of the cheating is rampant so take care everybody signing off g for g